And I stress it, they're conversations that you have to have. Hi, my name is Devin. Today I own several multi-million dollar companies. We started with $5,000 in a credit card. I don't know the easy way, I only know the hard way. Hey everyone, welcome to the Whiteboard Entrepreneur Podcast, where I give straightforward advice to fuel the entrepreneur in all of us. I'm Devin Dickinson, and today I want to talk to you about partnerships are tough. And if you're thinking about starting a partnership, I'm here to tell you, they are tough, okay? So I've had partnerships that have succeeded. Um, I've had partnerships that have failed. Um, and the, the partnerships, so I want to talk about how to make a partnership work But I also want you to consider whether a partnership is worth it in your situation. So most of the time people are like, oh, hey, I want to start a company. And, you know, we always feel very insecure, especially when you're just starting. And so the inclination is I need a partner, right? Because a lot of times if you kind of boil down why you had a partner in the beginning, a lot of times you probably didn't need a partner, but you wanted a partner so that you had someone to kind of do it with you, right? Like this encouragement, like, okay. And listen, I get it. That's how I started. Like, I think it makes sense, right? A lot of times you just need someone that gets into it together with you to give you the encouraged encouragement to move forward. Um, but if you can do it without a partner, it makes things a heck of a lot easier. Now, I understand that, you know, in some scenarios, you need that encouragement. And in other scenarios, you need a partner because you can do one aspect and the partner can do another aspect. And so it just makes sense. Like, hey, it's a hand and glove. Let's go. Let's do this together. And a lot of times that makes sense too. But I would also say maybe you can do one aspect, but could you hire someone to do the other aspect? Or could you pay a consultant? to do the other aspect or could you just have an employee do the other aspect does that person need to be a partner and the reason why I would encourage you to not have a partnership if at all possible it's because it's very difficult to work together if you think right now about how many marriages in the U.S. sadly don't make it why would you think that a partnership is going to make it, right? And you say, oh, well, marriage is way more complicated because, you know, marriage, you have to pay bills together. Um, okay, that sounds like a partnership. Oh, uh, marriage, you have to buy a house together. Uh, well, you have to get a place, that, you know, you both agree on to, for your business. Well, marriage, you know, you have kids. Well, in a partnership, you're probably going to have employees, right? Oh, but in, in, in a marriage, you have division of task. Well, I can guarantee you in a partnership, you're going to have that. Oh, but in a marriage, you know, you have this time management and, and, and who's going to do this then and who's going to pick up the kids and who's going to do that? Well, you definitely have those issues with, with partnerships too. So partnerships are very, very difficult. But I'll tell you, in America, it's easier to get divorced than it is to break up a partnership. And I don't mean legally on paper. I'm just talking about it is hard. Imagine taking a company and trying to separate it, right? It is very difficult to do. Who walks away with the customers? Who walks away with the assets? Who walks away with the bank account? How do you value it? Who does all these different things? And so it's extremely difficult. So when I talk to people about starting a partnership, I always always try to discourage it. If you can do something on your own without a partner, let me encourage you. I would highly encourage you to start that way. If for some reason you need a partner and then I would tell you, great. Then what you need to do is you need to lay some basic and fundamental ground rules for your partnership. And so it becomes a very, it's a little easier when one person's a majority and the other's a minority. But let me just encourage you that you have to have written policies and something you both sign, both agree with when it comes to decision making, right? So what happens if one person says yes and the other person says no? How do you solve that? Who wins the argument? Fundamentally, that's where you want to start, right? So that's a pretty uncomfortable conversation. So I would start my partnership before I did anything. I would sit down with my partner and I would have that conversation and say, okay, well, if we're going to do this partnership, how do we solve that? And if you can't get past that, right, if you can't get past that answer, 
well, then you ain't going to make it as a partnership, right? And so let's say you say, okay, great. We're actually going to be, I'm going to be 51% owner and this person is going to be 49% owner. And what that means is at the end of the day, if we disagree, then, then we're going to go with my decision and not this person's decision. Okay, great. Well, that's a good start. But what happens if you disagree so often that you're going to try to separate the company? Well, this is where I think it's very important going into the business that you already pre-negotiate how you will separate if you're going to go away, right? And so I think there's things called like a shotgun buy-sell agreement where you can basically say, hey, if this just isn't working out, uh, each one of us has the opportunity to make the other one an offer. And if the other person can't match that offer, then, you know, that person gets the business. So that way you make sure that the other person's never taken advantage, disadvantage, uh, taken advantage of because, you know, you have to give them a fair offer. And if it's not fair, the other person can basically counter that offer. Right. And so there's some things that you can do to make it fair in the event of a separation. And I highly encourage you to do a prenup, right? Do a prenup shoehole basically and meet with an attorney so that going into this, that you can already determine how you're going to separate if you separate, right? Because it's not as easy as you would think. You just say, oh, we're just going to separate. I take 51% and they take 41, 49%. Well, it's not as easy as that. that. It's not like there's just $100 in the bank account and you take $51 and they take $49, because you can do that, but who takes the customers, right? Uh, who Who's able to use what vendor, right? Who do the employees go with, right? Who, uh, who owes who for the loan, right? The repayment. Who owes who on who's responsible for the lease that you guys signed together, right? There's all of these things that are very difficult if you are a partnership. The other thing that you need to consider in a partnership is how do you deal with finances, right? Because you're going to find out just like in marriage, you may have two people that have different spending habits. And now you're in a partner with someone who like, let's say this person has a lot of bills to pay and they like to buy nice things. And they have this idea that I want to suck as much money out of the company as I can to do whatever I want to do. And listen, they have that right. Like, God bless them, right? They work hard. They want their money. They want to put braces on their kids. They want to buy a nicer house. They want to drive a cool car, whatever it is that they want to do. That's their right. They have a right to do whatever they want to do with their 49% or their 51%. But what if you look at money differently? And what if you say, no, I want to take out just the minimum amount because I want to use that money to put it back into the company to hire another salesperson. I want to use that money to put it back into the company to buy a a piece of property so we don't have to pay rent anymore. I want to use that money for other things. And now all of a sudden you have these two people that are both looking at the bank account and the revenue differently right? And so these are so many difficult conversations that you're going to have along the way. So again, if you can avoid this altogether, like you should avoid it altogether, but I would go into it with written ideas and every single year get together and have these conversations about how are we going to deal with our money? Are we going to leave it in the, are we going to leave a certain amount in the company to grow the company? Or are we going to try to take as much out as we can? And these are the conversations you have to have. And I stress that they're conversations that you have to have because a lot of people, what they do is these partners don't have the conversations with each other. They have it with, you know, uh, half of this company. And, and then, you know, the other partner has it with the, their employees that are their favorites. And they both have these conversations with their spouses. And there starts to be these basic lines drawn in the sand in the company. And there becomes these civil wars within the company where these two or three people are aligned with this owner. And these two or three people are aligned with this owner. And both owners end up with kind of competing interests. And they don't talk to each other about the important things in the company. And this spouse hates this spouse. And it just becomes a very cancerous and very difficult to run a business and the whole thing, the toxic, right? So my advice to you is don't have a partner, right? But 
If you do, and I'm telling you, I'm laughing because I have great partners. I have some wonderful partners, but I've had some really crappy partners over the year. But if you do have a partner right up ahead of time, have these hard conversations early, have them frequently, have them often, document how you guys are going to handle money, document how you're going to handle growth, document how you're going to handle decision-making, and even document again how you're going to separate in the event that you ever need to separate. The last thing I'm going to tell you is I personally believe to treat others the way that you want to be treated. And so when you have a partner Regardless of how your partner treats you, you need to treat your partner the way that you would like to be treated. And if you do that, at the end of the day, you're going to be able to put your head on the pillow and and know, even if you have to separate, that you treated your partner well and that you treated them the way that you would want to be treated. I'm Devin. This is Whiteboard Entrepreneur Podcast. I know this will help. 